Hi everyone, I am Maggie Klein and we are here at Jacuzzi Family Vineyards. We're here with our amazing winemaker, for those of you who haven't met him, Tom Gendel. Yes. And we are going to taste through some of your most recent club wines. Um, and just we want to let you know we miss you guys so much for those who can't come visit us. For those of you in the area, we are hosting tastings, all following all the safety precautions, um, and we would love to see you. And Tom is going to tell us again a little bit about the wines and then talk a little bit about what to expect for Harvest 2020. Hi guys, yeah, um, so we're tasting today the Anais, the Eglianico, and the Montepulciano. Um, fantastic wines, very, very distinct and different and um, very reflective of where they grow and their variety. Um, uh, should I start off with the Harvest 2020? I mean, right yeah. now it's, it is uh, July 28th today and we are seeing Verasion all throughout the valley here um, in Carneros. It's just starting, yeah, I yeah. know. Um, it comes quickly, just with the, all the weirdness in the world and stuff like that. Um, just time seems to go in big dollops, if you know what I mean. Like, 100%. Like, like, like was it, I saw a quote the other day, like a day lasts 400 hours and a week lasts two days or something like that. And it's, um, it's just kind of weird. And so Harvest has kind of rushed up on us pretty quickly, Verasian. Verasian's when the berries turn color, so the red varieties start turning red, and then the white varieties, they turn kind of a golden yellow color and soften up. And um, that's an indicator that Harvest is around about six weeks away, give or take, um, which is really, really exciting. Um, the yields are a little bit down this year. They're either the same as last year or a little bit lower. We had some rains throughout the season. Um, bud break was about normal. Um, we had some rains in May, kind of, not really rains, more showers, yeah. just kind of like it, drab weather. It's been a weather. very dry year, I will say. We did see, it was like May, but even in the more it wintry it, months, it wasn't like, sunny. yeah, it didn't rain at all in January, yeah. February, or March like we normally do, but May rain came around and we got fog and just kind of drizzled, just yeah. kind of enough to kind of get, we had um, what we call stuck caps on the flowers, and so um, the flowers weren't able to pollinate themselves, and so we don't see as many berries on the bunches. So hopefully that meat leads to more concentration and better flavor, but the hops will tell us that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's just a fairly normal growing season. We've had good heat, not crazy heat. Um, we've had like a week in that 90 to 100 degree temperature, which is what we really need to kind of push the season along, but no crazy heat or anything like yeah. that, but it's still early days. I mean, yeah, this July's been a cooler month. That's been 80, me around 80 for yeah. the last two weeks and i think it's going to go for another week almost yeah. so that's really really good that long hang time gives you better flavors and better concentration so 2020 is lining up to be a really interesting ex excellent harvest with that lower yield you get that longer hang time and more concentration more flavor so fingers crossed for good weather for the rest yes. rest of the way through harvest um, but anyway let's taste some wines eh? um, Definitely. Uh, so this is the 2019 rns the yeah, rns we like to keep good. yeah it's beautiful and aromatic it's kind of our arom aromatic variety we do all stainless steel fermentation. It's um, one of our latest picks as well. It's grown in um, Pitalumic Gap. Um, it's out on Adobe Road, I think it is. Um, beautiful vineyard grown by Armando Seha, um, of the Seha family. They've been farmers in the valley for three generations, yeah. I think. So fantastic grape farmers. Um, we picked this, I think the date we picked this on was the 28th of October. So literally the last pick date we had in the 2019 harvest. Um, very, very late. It's very, really, really aromatic. Lots of floral notes. It's got a nice little bit of honey and beeswax character in there too. But very, very fresh fruit, like um, citrus and, me and uh, melons. Mm -hmm. mm. So is it normal for a white wine to be picked like one of the last picks? Well, that's the nice thing about Italian varieties. They're yeah. all really late picked. Yeah. If you think about Italy, it's really, really hot there. And um, they need a long time to ripen. So a lot of the times you can have quite tannic and quite acidic wines. So if you let that let them hang out for a little bit longer, you'll get a much more fruity wine, a lot yeah. more bouquet to it, and um, soft, well not soft acid, but softer acid, mm -hmm. and um, a more balanced wine. So 20, um, this is by far the latest white wine we pick, um, along with uh, the Roussan Marsan as well. Yeah. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the Petaluma Gap? Yeah, sure. Um, the Petaluma Gap, um, Petaluma Gap is, so the winery jacuzzi is in Carneros, we're at the southern, south, western part of Carneros. If you go west towards the Pacific Ocean on the other side of the hill, you went to the Petaluma Gap. Uh, the Petaluma Gap is a, what the newest AVA in California. It was uh, officially formed in 2000, beginning of 2018. And it is a very, very cool climate. It's renowned for its Pinot Noir and Chardonnay and a little bit of Syrah. 90% of what's grown out there is Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. Um, so tiny quantities of things like Arnaeus and other varieties. So we're really, really lucky to have this mm -hmm. variety from out here. It's delicious. Yeah. Um, really late ripening, as I said, but it gets a lot of cold fog. So um, the Petaluma Gap is defined by the low-lying hills, 
uh, by Bodega Bay, Bodega Bay of the birds fame, obviously. <laughs> and um, there are really low lying hills there. And so what happens is, as Sonoma and Napa and the Central Valley heat up further inland, that hot air rises and sucks all that cold air from the Pacific Ocean. It rushes through that area called the Petaluma Gap. Um, there's a consistent wind all through there and they come, come the wind, wind and fog comes from the ocean and slams into the hills that butt up against Sonoma Valley. Um, and then it gets funneled down into San Francisco Bay. Uh, the winds are uh, normally around about 10 miles per hour, just enough to kind of give you a little bit of thicker skin and slow the racking down. So, yeah. really fantastic awesome. area, renowned for making really high class wines. Yeah, um, There's some, there are some wonderful yeah. wines coming out of there, and this is no exception. Yeah, no, this is fantastic. I really love making this wine. We do simple stuff to it, um, we keep it at, we pop, um, hand pick it first thing in the morning, it comes into the winery. Um, we de stem, I think we de stem, we de stem it and press it. Um, and then it's to, uh, we rack it up to two days once it's got a little bit of clarification. Um, then it goes into another stainless steel tank. We inoculate this one. We want to keep it nice and fresh and lively and vibrant. Yeah. Keep all that fruit flavor in there. Um, and then afterwards, after fermentation, fermentation took um, about, here it says about three weeks actually. It took wow. about three weeks. So slow, cold fermentation. It got up to 60 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's kept only around 50, uh, 55 for most of the ferment. And then at 60 degrees at the end of ferment, we lift it up to finish the fermentation cleaning. Yeah. Awesome, it's a great wine. Yeah, it's delicious. It's really, really wonderful and pretty. Mm. Great with hard cheeses and stuff like that. Yeah. Great acidity, um, really nice to Yeah, we, we do have some amazing pairings for this wine on the website. So make sure to go check those out. All right, what's wine number two? That's the Eglianico. Eglianico, um, such an interesting variety. It is a really it's interesting. It's so different. Like you definitely don't find this very often. No, and it's even find, it's even hard to find uh, from Italy as well. Yeah. Not much of it even makes it out here. We actually did a competitive tasting last year, yeah. and we struggled to find other variety, other versions of it. This one's really, really fantastic. Um, this wine, it's grown out in Tracy Hills. Um, it's a mineral deposit, um, gravelly soils, um, big, uh, vigorous vines out there. Um, we've got a grower out there who grows a good chunk of our um, interesting Italian varieties, one of them being this Eglianico and the Montepulciano as well. Um, this really shows kind of the tier while, like that kind of earthy kind of. Totally. It's got really yeah. interesting it's aromatics. Super savory. Very, very savory and almost like a uh, sun dried tomato character mm -hmm. too. Mm -hmm. um, beautiful kind of a, a bit of plum in there as well. And the texture is really, really attractive. Yeah. And very it, and lush it, and li um, rich. Yeah. It's got a really long length. Yeah. The richness is amazing, and there's still a brightness to it that I think makes it a really great pairing wine. Like this will go pretty much with anything. Yeah, definitely with um, any meat dish you want to have. But it's not overpowering. The tannins are very soft and rich and smooth. This is a 2018. 2018 was a cooler vintage, but out in Tracy Hills, it's pretty hot, so we got this nice and ripe. Um, it was picked at the end of September mm. and um, picked ripe and it's just delicious. It's got so much spice and cherry notes as well. Yeah. Fantastic wine. Really, yeah. really like and, and Tracy Hills, you were saying, it's a much warmer Yeah, region, so right? it's, um, it's just on the edge of the Central Valley. It's a lot warmer out there. They get a lot more days over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah. And the Italian varieties really kind of thrive in that temperature, um, similar to what they have in Italy. It's got a really nice um, vein of baking spice as well. Mm -hmm. We use um, French medium plus oak on this just to give it a bit more complexity and richness. How long is it on oak? It was aged for 18 months on yeah, oak. Nice. Yeah, just to kind of, we really want to rich and, and round out those tannins yeah. on that wine. because It's so well integrated. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's really good. Yeah, yeah it's really happy with this wine. Nice. And uh, lastly, we've got the Monte Luciano, which is a blockbuster wine. Yeah, and, and I think this is definitely a crowd favorite. I mean, you yeah. put your nose in here and it smells like chocolate. Like it smells like plummy, chocolate and plum. It's delicious. It's amazing nose. It's got a little strawberry in there as well, hints of cherry, yeah. raspberry. It's got a huge fruit bouquet. Um, just really kind of jumps out of the glass. It's very, very expressive. And just another one of those like super unique Italian varietals. Again, mm -hmm. you don't find this very often. I think people associate Montepulciano with um, Montepulciano di Abruzzo, yeah, which is Sangiovese, right? Uh, well, that's yeah, that is actually Montepulciano mm -hmm. um, di Rosso. Yeah, so, something like that. Montalcino. That's what I'm. Montalcino. So yeah. people kind of confuse this with that, but it's it's its own variety. It's so delicious, super unique. Um, it's the second. Um, so Sangiovese is generally considered as the. Um, 
as the main variety in that area. Milk Pichano is the secondary variety yeah. in that area. Um, but this is a fantastic, it's really juicy fruits as well, very rich, um, beautiful integration as well. The tannins, it's a little more concentrated than the Aglianico, a little bit more structure, a little bit more wholeness to it. Yeah. I mean, if you want to be pairing this with your steaks and your beefs, because this is more with your pork and your chicken, if you know what I mean. Totally, yeah. And uh, no, just delicious, yummy wine. Awesome, great job. Um, well, so thank you guys so much for tasting along with us. Um, we are putting together some Zoom tastings, so be on the lookout for an invite to those. And we hope to see you soon. Everyone stay safe, and thanks again. Cheers. Cheers.